Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you. Establish all things by your word. Remind all of us over and over again that we are on this earth for a purpose. And that purpose, Father God, you have revealed and placed inside our DNA. We ask that God that even as we walk on this earth, live on this earth, we will not, Father, be distracted by the things in this life. And we continue to focus on our prime calling that you have for each one of us. You ask us, O oh God, to walk in the walk of Jesus. And you have a specific task for each one of us, as you do for all the Bible people. Each of them aspire to be as God in His attributes. But each has a specific duty to perform, a specific responsibility. And we know, Father God, that you reveal all things by your dreams and visions that you implant into each one of us. You say that when the Holy Spirit comes, you will show all these things. And you cause us, Father, to rise into the fullness of that. So open the eyes of our understanding that we may know the meaning of all the messages you send us to dreams and through visions. And help us to be faithful to perform your will. That which you have ascertained for us even before we were born. We ask that God that your Holy Spirit will continue, Lord, to make so clear, shining as the day rises, shining as the noon sun, that it may be clear to our heart and minds, every dream, every vision. And cause us, Father God, to be strengthened by that, and cause your angels who aid us in this manner to also be strengthened, as you reward us for our obedience, reward the angels too. We thank you, Father, and bless you as we consider your word, transform and change us into your likeness. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. Now, this is what we have uh, done, and uh, very quickly. In our first service, we say that when you have a dream, you have to filter the dreams. Not all dreams are from your spirit, not all dreams are messages from God. Uh, dreams can come from your, your own self, can come from the enemy, can come from God. And if you walk right with God, the enemy is eliminated, there's no way he can come near you. Even the dreams on our soul, as we saw, uh, can have some benefits because uh, one of the things about soul dreams or soul visions is that it does reveal your inner nature. It does reveal your soul condition and your emotions that you cannot hide. Then you've got to apply the laws of interpretation of dreams and visions uh, uh, to whatever is left. When you filter off the natural and the soul, you only left the spiritual. And the spiritual must be in line with the word. And a dreamer, a dreamer can arise. But if the dreamer, a dreamer dreams something that brings you away from God, then obviously it's not of God. So the Bible is above all dreams and visions. Dreams and visions are never above the Bible. The Bible is above all dreams and visions. Even if dreams and visions are from the Rhema, a specific Rhema of God, yet it cannot contradict the total revelation of God from Genesis to Revelations. And after filtering that, okay, these are all spiritual sources, and they align with the word, and, and while making that in line with the word, it will in the process filter off to the word and the Bible, uh, that which is from the enemy, and then you're ready for the interpretation of dreams, which we have touched on some of these principles. Firstly, we need to, to know the background and the source of all um, of all dream. By source, we're not talking about the previous one, whether it's a soul source, but the source is that there is a cause, there's a cause for dream and vision to be seen by an individual. There is, of course, three areas of background. A, the allegorical context, and that is, to everyone, certain things mean different things. And uh, uh, a horse might mean different things for each person, and for each culture, even and your cultural context is also taken into consideration. Uh, then secondly, your dreams and visions will always flow with your DNA of your natural position or your spiritual position in God. 
when you're at a certain level, you'll always see at that level. You can't help it. It's just built in your spiritual or the natural DNA. Like Pharaoh, he was the one who was chosen by God to see the dream of the seven fat cows followed by the 17 cows. The seven fat grains of, of uh, grain and the 17 grains. Because it has to do with his nation. Obviously, he's in charge. He's responsible. So God tried to speak to him in dreams. Uh, and then, see... The background has to be also inclusive of what is immediately concerning a person. Like Nebuchadnezzar, he was concerned about what happened after his kingdom has completed. So he has a dream that was an answer to his query and his question. So sometimes dreams are of that nature that uh, comes to take place. Then, uh, after you have sourced up the background, because the background is important, you have to Ask yourself constantly this question. What is causing the dream? What's the background to the context of the dream? Was there a query made with God? Uh, was there something because you're responsible for, then God revealed it to you so that you could participate in a better way? Uh, without the background, you should not attempt interpretation. You will get it wrong. Then, most people jump to two analysis. They analyze the dream. Uh, and so they start to make uh, this meaning, this means that, this means the other thing. So in analysis of the data, the Bible is the dictionary. So if the Bible says a snake represents something evil, then it represents something evil. If the Bible tells us uh, uh, a dog represents something that is not necessarily good, then it represents that. But you need a bit of context that if a person loves dogs, then obviously dogs can mean something else. Although there's a general biblical sense of the vocabulary. And secondly, in terms of analysis, behind every dream there is a main message. Sometimes you get lost in all the interpretation, you forgot what God was trying to say, the main message. There's always a main message and a meaning behind it. In the book of Job chapter 33, it says God speaks once, yea, twice, to turn man away from the path of hell. So obviously there's a main message that directs you and nudge you in a certain direction. We concluded with Paul uh, being led by a vision to go to Macedonia. But the main message was to go to Macedonia. The main message was not to find a man in Macedonia. Uh, you can get distracted with trying to find a man, but when Paul went to Macedonia in Philippi, the first group of people he, f- he found was the women praying by the riverside. And instead of finding a man, he found a woman called Lydia, a seller of purple. And so there she was, uh, used by God. And the first congregation that Paul had was all women. It was almost contradictory to the vision he had. But it was not. Because the main message was, go to Macedonia. So God didn't want him to go and analyze all these uh, details and distract him from looking after the man. Looking for the man. And thirdly, in every dream, there is a key that points to something. In both the Butler and Baker's dream, in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 40, the number three is prominent. It speaks about three days. And then what happens at the end was also emphasized. It is also interesting that... Uh, when it comes to the time of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37, you notice the timing when he has a dream. He was at the age of about 17. His father had just favored him. Uh, unfortunately, that is not the good. The father should take care of all and love all his children equally. And as a result of the father's mistake of loving the children inequally, he caused them to be in strife. Nevertheless, God chose a time like that to give him two dreams. And the dream was to be sealed into his heart so that he sort of know the direction in which he was going. The key in both dreams was the bowing down. There were different types of dreams, different uh, things that were used, stars represented the brother instead of the sheep. But the bowing down was the key that something will cause him to rise to a certain position that things will, uh, circumstances or situations or people will bow down to him. It talks about his future that is there. So there is 
these elements in terms of uh, dreams and the uh, interpretation of dream that you can apply to every single dream and every single vision that you have. When you begin asking these questions, by answering some of these little areas, it will lead you a little closer to the meaning and the interpretation of the dreams that you have. Remember this is our second service as we conclude. You're welcome to ask questions along the way. And uh, if along the way any one of you want to volunteer a dream for us to analyze, that will be interesting. And uh, so we can start uh, apply. Anyone has any uh, dreams to apply? Before I touch on another area on advancing in your spiritual walk in dreams and visions. So before we go to the next one, anybody uh, has uh, any dream that you have or a particular vision? Okay, there's uh, Deborah. Can you give her a. Okay, I would send. Uh, can, wait, let's speak, uh, bring it forth and give you the microphone so those online can hear. Dreams, uh, not, not dreams, but a vision. A vision, fine. Okay, the first uh, the vision is seen by uh, both uh, Willing uh, as well as Fiona on the same day, 21st of February. 21st of February, okay. Uh, Willing was uh, just about to leave uh, Okinawa. Mm. Okinawa for they just came back. And she saw a vision of a brown sandy path beside a steep vertical cliff. And the word, the, the thought that came into her mind was, one wrong step and you'll fall to your death. Okay, that, that's her vision. And then uh, on the same day, Fiona in Melbourne also saw a vision of a man and a lady on the cliff. Huh? Here it says, a man in flowing white robe was with a lady on the ground. Suddenly the ground gave way and they were on the edge of a cliff. The man helped the lady back to prevent her from falling. So it's the same dream actually. Mm -hmm on the same day. The daughters of both have the same dreams on the same day. Also. Which is very good, yes. So since it's repeated, it must be important and therefore I just wonder what this dream is all about. Okay. It's interesting in it's that... Dream, sorry, vision. Ah, uh, vision, okay. It's interesting in that uh, uh, the place where Muiling has the, the dream, the, the background was in Okinawa. And there is Japan. And uh, Fiona, we know she's in Melbourne, and she saw something else. Uh, she saw a man and a woman. A man in a white robe, so I think more like angel. A man in a white robe and a lady. A lady, a lady on the ground. So if the man in the white robe, a lady in the ground, uh, the, earth, the, earth the, earth, the earth moves, yeah, okay, then and then the she's the there. The so. Uh, both dreams, okay. okay, the main message, you can see the main message was to be careful, to be aware, and to be aware that uh, they are walking in a path that is uh, no room for error. So the message is very clear, no room for error, no room for mistakes, you have to exactly know what you do. And so the other details that are there, so the main thing in any, any vision or any dream is to get the main message first. So once you get the main message, then perhaps the details might point to something else. But as you can see, uh, in Muiling's case it's a vision and she just hears something. And uh, so it's the caution that is there. So the main message was received. Not much allegory to interpret. And uh, Fiona one is allegory. Now, a man in a white robe need not always be an angel. I pay note to that. So that's the default mode, you jump straight to angel. You can see saints in white robes. You can also see sometimes a spirit of a person in white robes. You can see an angel in a white robe. So to widen your vocabulary, uh, as you open yourself to interpretation, uh, which is the key, because the wrong interpretation gives you the wrong application. Uh, and, uh, so white rock can be angel, can be humans, can be human spirits, or spirits of human make perfect, uh, and can be spirit men or people. 
Because sometimes when you see a person's spirit, they might be wearing every clothing or they might be from the heavenly perspective. Uh, no description on the woman, what she's wearing. Okay, no description on the woman, what she's wearing. A woman can represent many things. And babies can represent different things. Babies or children can represent something new, a new project. Could be uh, actual children involved, could be represent new project, could be bring di uh, different things. But a woman can represent a church. A woman can represent uh, even something that is, uh, uh, could be actually uh, uh, in the area of uh, something that's on the feminine side. A church can be a feminine site or some avenue of perhaps even a person or a group of persons. As you know, the Macedonian man in the vision, he didn't represent himself. The Macedonian man represent all of Macedonia and the work of God is to be done in Macedonia. And so even the apostle, the Macedonian man, his ministry was to uh, the ladies. That was his first Philippian church. Uh, later on, there was a, a Philippine jailer who jailed him. He cast out the, the demon from a possessed uh, person, and then he was jailed for that. And he and Silas continued to sing hymns. And so you have that in, in, in that context that is there. Now, there is something to add. When you have a series of visions, then they form a story. As you know, we can go day by day, one day you got this vision, one day you got that vision, one day you got that dream, one day you got that dream. You can see that if your person led by dream, your life is haphazard. Which is why at the end of the day, visions and dreams support our decision making, not replace. When they replace our decision making, then you no more make decisions. You become more puppet-like. Puppet like and and also, the other thing is, a dream can caution you, but a dream cannot actually tell you exactly what to do. It will tell you all the things to be, to be careful of, but then it tells you, okay, this uh, doesn't tell you exactly what not to do or what to do. Think about the dream that uh, Mrs. Pontius Pilate had in uh, Matthew 27. And she came to her husband, and says she's troubled by a dream, and then she called Jesus a just man. That means he's not guilty. She knew in the dream he's not guilty. And she mentioned the fact that he is a just man. See the example here in um, Matthew 27. In verse 19, she has suffered many things. That means she must have got sleep, sleepless uh, occurrence, he couldn't forget that dream. And she came to fight Pontius Pilate at the right time. Pontius Pilate had certain duties to perform. He cannot avoid his duty of making a judgment on Jesus. Because they just brought him to the case. He was one of the three main uh, governors of that region. And since he's brought to him, he has to make a decision on that. The Jews were pressuring him to crucify Jesus. The Jews already made up their mind that Jesus was guilty. As he analyzed the situation, Jesus was not guilty. But, and he, remember, he tried to release Jesus. And when he's thinking of releasing Jesus, they cried, no, release another person, a robber. So the Jews were predetermined that he has to be killed. And he found a way out. He found a way out by washing his hands. He said he has nothing to do with this man. And he publicly washed his hand as a symbol. That means he's clean. He doesn't have any, anything to do with Jesus. The dream did affect uh, the wife. But there was nothing in the wife's dream that tells any details. Except for the fact that, look at the word, Jesus did not commit anything. He's a just man. And definitely, I'm sure, uh, it's always frightening for any judge to try to condemn, unless they themselves are evil, to condemn an innocent person is the hideous, most hideous of all crimes. Because whenever innocent people suffer or innocent blood is shed, 
it makes the guilty even more guilty. And God will act. It brings the activity of God into the situation. So that's an a interesting thing about the main message of the dream. Uh, as we go further, I want to add this area of what I call uh, where we talk about improving on uh, many areas of the dreams and in progressing. Now that we know dreams and visions are contacting the spiritual dimension, there is another area we can grow and improve into that area. That is, and that is third, there is such a thing called continuity or repeated dreams. And um, continuity speaks about consistent living in God. That means if your dreams are always all over the place, you don't have continuity. You have scattered dreams here and there. And scattered dreams here and there are useful but not that useful as consistency. And that also applies to visions. Uh, vision and dream as we grow in God must take a level of continuity. Example, i give the Bible example without turning since you know those examples. In Genesis 37, Joseph was given the same type of dream twice. Twice. It came to him when he was 17 years old and look at the background. It came only after his father gave him a coat of many colors. One of the most interesting things I found about the spiritual world and about the natural world, how it interacts is that sometimes some natural things all natural here's a law all natural things are influenced by spiritual realm that one you have the bible in fact in hebrews 11 verse 3 it says the things which are made were not made of the things which are seen implying they're made of things which are unseen and we do know even in romans chapter 1 that god made all the world according to his attributes so there are enough verses to show that the things that are invisible are the actual real form. The natural world is a shadow of that. Also you have 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 that tells us that we look at the things which are not seen. So Paul could look at the things that are real. Remember always this, the things which are not seen are more real than the things which are seen. And the things which are not seen are putting a pressure on the things which are seen. To make the things which are seen conform to the things which are not seen. There is pressure upon the natural world. Like what you see around us in the natural is not going to remain for 5 years or 10 years. Between now and the next 5 years, the things around you will change. But right now, the changes that are around us could be in the hearts and minds of many people. Perhaps an owner of the next land is dreaming of building something. So the spiritual realm is impeding upon his imagination and in his heart to do something with his land. And he might do something within five years. And in five years time, the physical place looks different because there are new buildings. And so there is pressure in the invisible realm upon the hearts and minds of people to turn things around the physical. Plus, we do not know what the natural things will be. Whether there will be a super storm that might blow to this place that might uproot three of the trees that are around. So between now and five years time, those three trees might not exist. And then, they are replaced by another different type of tree. So, the natural phenomena is also putting pressure on the physical things around, around us. At that time when Joseph received a special, special, special blessing from his father, in the spirit he was going to receive something. You might not see the tie, 
but it was. In the natural, he received a coat of many colors, which is very special. But physical things are nothing. Actually, at the age of 17, it was time to, for him to receive his calling. It so happened that in the natural, he received a coat of many colors, but in the spirit, God was already showing him the dream of his future. He actually was receiving a different coat. If you look at it, this was what happened. What, you see, time is, can move very fast and can intermix. The future can be a shadow in the natural. The, the future can be a shadow in the natural present. And the whole reflection is just like one face, although it could be many years. Look at it this way in the book of Genesis 37. Genesis 37. In Joseph. It says here in verse 3, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Now that one is wrong. He should love all them equally because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. So Joseph received a new coat. He must be wearing the new coat when he walked around. I mean, he's a young boy, of course, you know, he's, he's very happy. And his brother hated him for that. Blame it on the father for part of him. And Joseph being young, of course, he didn't know all this hatred that's going on. And, uh, and uh, ignorant to them. And that was when, in verse 5, he had a dream. Right. So he had a coat. Now, jump forward in time, 13 years later. Exactly 13 years later. Now, time is just like that. 13 years later, in Genesis chapter, four, uh, chapter 41. Pharaoh had a dream. Joseph interpreted the dream. And look at what Joseph had to do. And verse 14. They sent for Joseph. They brought him quickly out of the dungeon. He shaved. He changed his clothing. And he cannot wear prisoner clothing. They would have put on a best clothing for him. So he was putting on his clothing. And as he stood before Pharaoh in his clothing, there was probably a new set of clothing. And it was be like a bit more uh, embellished because he's coming before Pharaoh. When, when all the courtiers knew he's going to bring him before Pharaoh, they quickly, especially the butler. The butler quickly gave him a very good set. And it was a very good set of clothing with a royal look. And he stood before Pharaoh, interpreted the dream, and immediately after that, on that day itself, when he received the new clothing, on the day itself, Pharaoh made him the number one man after himself. You shall be over my house, he says in verse 40. And then he, verse 42, he took his signet ring, put it on Joseph's hand, and look, some more thing happened. He clothed him in even better clothing. So on that day, he had two sets of clothing, two changes. So he put on him the best fine linen, a gold chain about his neck. Give him his second chariot. He got the first chariot, he got the second chariot. And commanded, and look at the dream. What was the command? Bow the knee every time he walked by. The command went out. The crier went out. When the chariot of Joseph come, there is only one command. Bow the knee. If you don't bow, you get slaughtered. Now, time travel backwards to Joseph's dream. What were the two dreams telling? Bow to him. Literally fulfilled, correct? Everyone had to bow. You don't bow in those days, you get killed. So can you see that the future, he had a new coat. 
dressed in the most royal coat of Pharaoh, and the reflection back in time, 13 years before, when he was a nobody, the first colorful coat he had was already prophetically pointing to that. At that time, a dream came. Because dreams foretell the future of what is to come to pass. And he was receiving it not once, twice. Can you see the continuity, the similarity? Court trigger something. Courts bow here, bow. There is a continuity, something trigger. Like for example, if let's say Gmail is supposed to live in Australia for some time, in the end all the twelve will be based on Australia at some point, then he might never be. But on the day you step in, ding, a certain dream or vision might come. See, that is very important to realize. Or, let's say, suppose some of you are supposed to be in Canada. Then on the day that you land, ding, it might come. But it does not come until you landed. Very straight. The natural must touch the spiritual. Some sort of confluence of similarity, continuity, or uh, casting of the shadow from the future. So the future casts a shadow into the past. The, and the past, which is the present, is a prophetic seed of that which is in the future. That is the interesting thing about the spiritual realm. Because the spiritual realm creates the natural realm. And the natural realm is a shadow of the spiritual realm. You will always have that happening all the time. All the time. Which is why when you want to progress spiritually, it is important to have dreams that you could dreams and visions that you could continue on. So for the daughters of God, even though they have those two dreams, part of what we cannot interpret just by itself is this. It has to relate to all the other dreams I have. Especially when you have a lot of visions and dreams. God works in this way. When you begin to have a lot of visions and dreams, He can reveal, let's say, a dream story over one month. And he's, you're supposed to take one month of download before you interpret. But if you take out of context, every one of us know. In a sermon, in a speech, in a conversation, in any situation, in a book, in anything, if you take something out of context, what happens? You can miss the whole thing. So where there's an abundance of revelations, one must take the single dream, single vision and look at the overall message okay this is message number one or oh, number 2.5 then you might have a 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.4 2.5 so the 2.5 cannot be looked at on its own so although we took that i know that there has been a series of visions visions and the whole series of visions is contextual to other things that were happening and uh so, let me write the points down. Under continuity, I don't have space, so I put it at the side here. You have A, reputation. 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 It repeats. Certain things repeat. They are like... Uh, uh, the key of G, the key of C, it repeats. So when there's a reputation, you, it's supposed to gain attention. Look at what Joseph say about a reputation of a dream in Genesis 41 here. As he interprets the double dream, in verse 25, Joseph said to Pharaoh, 
The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. And the seven years, uh, uh, the, sev- se- the good cows are seven years, and the good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. Verse 27. The 17 and ugly cows which came after them are the seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is a thing which I've spoken to Pharaoh. God has in- shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come through all the land. But after them, seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land. The famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice. Because the thing is established by God, and God will sure, shortly bring it to pass. It's repeated because there are two reasons. Look at the reputation. First reason is you cannot change it. We have to react to it. We can accommodate it into our life. We cannot try to pray against it. It's already predetermined. The second reason that he says is it's repeated because it's now very near. You know how, you know, when uh, things get more and more urgent, uh, let's say you're in a car, you know, and you have to warn something, you horn the person, pee, and that's it. Hopefully the attention. But let's say it, it's getting nearer and nearer, the person is not moving. You're, pow, 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 right? Because danger. You're getting near to the actual place that something must change. So the same way, the more the dream repeat, the more often it comes, the closer is the time. That is why as a tsunami comes nearer and nearer, more and more people will begin to have that kind of dream. Uh, God is merciful. And it will begin to sound more and more often. Take note of what I call this doctrine of continuity that is there. Especially if it's repeated. It's repeated. Now, sometimes the reputation can be repeated in a different way. Like, for example, in Daniel's time. In the book of Daniel, you have the four empires mentioned in Daniel's four horrible-looking creatures. Four funny-looking animals. And each animal represents an empire. And all those was interpreted up to the ten, ten horns. And then they describe what the ten horns does. So that is Daniel's uh, first recorded vision. Then in chapter 8, in the third year of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to Daniel. And the vision looks like different type of animals. <clears throat> this time he saw a ram with two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. This represents the Persian Empire. And uh, then after that, he saw a male goat. The male goat represents the Greek Empire. In verse 5. And then the story shows how the goat came against uh, the ram and he won. And uh, then the dream was uh, given him certain timing, 2,300 days, etc., then when he saw all those things, that was the first time he encountered Gabriel. And Gabriel was told to make Daniel understand this vision in verse 16. So when Gabriel came to explain, he interpreted the vision. And says in verse 20, the ram which you saw represent the kings of Media and Persia. The male goat is a kingdom of greed. So no need interpretation. It's all done. But it says, there was a broken horn and the four that stood up in place. Four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. And again, there was an emphasis. What was the emphasis? The Antichrist. In the first vision, chapter 7, he revealed all the way to the ten, ten horns. Out of the ten horns, there came a little horn. So the emphasis was on the little horn. In the second picture, 
God can use a totally different picture. The Middle Persian Empire is now represented by different animals. Same with the Greek Empire. But at the end, it shows that the Greek Empire will break into four pieces. And out of one section of the empire, the former Greek Empire, will come a king with fierce features. Again, pointing to the Antichrist. Daniel's dream has constantly been a revelation of the Antichrist and what it will be like. There is consistency in his dream, a continuity. And as he got one vision after another, and he saw it, uh, he fainted because it's a tremendous vision to download. Uh, later on, he has many, many encounters. Again, uh, this time from his own self, when he studied the prophecy of Jeremiah, and he prayed for 21 days. It was revealed to him what it was. And again, the same theme. He exposed and revealed the Messiah and the Antichrist. Notice the theme in Daniel's life. He was revealing and exposing the Antichrist to prepare for the end times. There is what I call a continuity, but the continuity was a different kind of continuity. Uh, there is a reputation using different pictures, different, pi different pictures, and that continually bring it forth right through. If you look at Abraham's life, there was always continuity about his seed. Your descendants, your descendants, your descendants, your descendants. In the end, all those blessings are concentrated on one seed, Christ. And what flows from Christ? There was a continuity about his seed. Even, strangely speaking, his own need to have an heir. And you would wonder, how God choose all these circumstances which I want to make us all aware. We think we are so great, so clever, so mighty, you know, so well organized. But let me tell you, the organization started before we were born. We were not just the organizer, we were the organized. <laughs> God already prepared and planned everything. He planned in such a way that Abraham had no children. Yet to the one who had no children, he want to give many children. It was all part of the story that was planned way before Abraham was born. Your story and my story are planned way before we were born. Everything about your natural life, Everything about your character, everything about who you are, what you want to do, is incorporated into your natural life right now. Ooh. We still have to choose. <coughs> Wrong choices are also still dangerous. But even if you make the right choices, everything in your life, every test you go through, every lack you go through, Every strength you have, every weakness you have, all the circumstances that you are, are face have been incorporated by a master planner. No escape. You're born, you're already organized. A book is written about you. And to the wise, God speaks through dreams and vision and give you a clue about what the story of your life is about. Now here is it. You enter into this life, you enter into a very organized plan. But because you're one individual, you are, like Shakespeare says, an actor on the stage of life. You don't know what is happening, but God knows what is happening. Angels by know what's happening, but you don't know, and they're not allowed to tell you. As you act out each one, only God knows what tomorrow is. And sometimes you wish you know what tomorrow is. But if you know, He takes the fun out of it. He says, it's no fun! Especially when you're on the edge of a cliff. You wonder, what's the next chapter? Well, the next chapter, 
The next episode be you fall in your in your in your hospitalization or you walk successfully. So it's like you're on that. And guess what? It gives you dreams and vision. And the thread of your dreams form a continuity that tells you your future is locked in. Which comes to our second point. Watch the reputation and be watch I use the word lock, but look at what is sealed into your life. Seal or lock in. You can be locked into a flow of destiny. There are many rivers that flow. Let's say you have a choice and there are four rivers that flow. One river takes you north, one river takes you south, one river takes you east, one river takes you west. Let's say the will of God for you at that place in time is to go west. You jump into the wrong river, cannot go already. No matter how you swim, the river is still going north or east or south. You have to jump into the west river that takes you. But once you are in the right river, you are locked in. Even you don't do anything, you hang on to a lock of wood and sing, you know. Of course, you won't be able to sing row, row, row a boat since you're not in a boat. Uh, you'll be hanging on, you say, you know, uh, what can you sing? Uh, I've got peace like a river. <laughs> so you're floating down the river. Even if you do nothing else, you're really locked in. Into the right flow that God wants you to be in. There may be dangers, there may be suffering, there may be different things. And here's the thing. Don't human always run from danger? And that's what lead to the misinterpretation of Acts 21, a prophecy which is, you know, can consider like a vision of Paul's life. In Acts 21. Look at it this way. Everything you do in life is filled with danger. The moment you come to the earth. And in Acts 21, look at the mistakes that people make. Paul came to Tyre and they found in verse 4 a group of disciples. And the, he stayed there for seven days. During the seven days, every one of them told him, don't go to Jerusalem. They were wrong, Paul was right. Because Paul said, he already know what will happen in Jerusalem. He know he will be in prison. But he know one more thing, it is God's perfect will. That's why next week we're going to teach about suffering. Because people run from suffering. People run from danger. Now, don't mistake me, sometimes you got to run. But sometimes you got to stay your ground. And Paul already know that was a mistake. That was a wrong interpretation of some downloads they had. If Paul had listened to them, Paul would have gone outside God's will. He might die an early death instead of live a wonderful life. Then he goes down. He already told and Paul says, No, I know God's will. And he knows what God's, what God's will is. And then he went to Philip's house. The three daughters prophesied. In Philip's house, uh, four daughters prophesy, and as he was there, a prophet, and this is quite a well-known prophet, he prophesied in Acts 11 about the famine. And this guy, he prophesied by acting up. So he took Paul's belt, bound his hands and says, Thus says the Lord, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind a man who owns this belt. Of course, he's Paul. But why, must he, why not he just say, Paul, you know, he has to go through the whole motion. 
You just have to obey God. And that was the way he prophesied. So, he says, Thus says the Holy Spirit, the Jews uh, shall bind this man and deliver into the hands of Gentiles. And he was part of God's will. Look at their reaction. The we speaks about Dr. Liu, probably all the other leaders that were with him, uh, many of them. When they heard that, they pleaded with Paul, don't go to Jerusalem, don't go to Jerusalem. Paul says, why are you doing this? I'm ready to die. I know it's God's way for me to go to Jerusalem. And verse 14, when they, they cannot persuade him, they say, the will of the Lord be done. Actually, it was the will of the Lord. People run from suffering, but Paul ran to suffering. And there's a reason. Part of the suffering is the reward that is created in heaven. Remember when the disciples want to be right hand and left hand? What was the first thing Jesus talked about? Suffering. Suffering. Say, are you able to be baptized with the same baptism and baptized with someone they confident? Yeah! <laughs> it was a baptism of suffering. So when you talk about positions in heaven, you talk about rewards in heaven, it involves suffering. I don't know why they don't have enough teaching on, on this on the earth. But it's, a, it's the more you suffer, the more you're rewarded. Suffer for Jesus, of course. And the more you're tested, the more you're rewarded. It is the law of God. So some of you who have been spending years running from suffering, Avoidance of suffering. You've been running from your rewards. And your reward has been trying to chase you. <laughs> and then you turn around and say, Why is all the blessing that God wants to give me not there? Because you're always running from suffering. When, when you saw the face of the reward, the face was suffering. Then you were so frightened, you keep running and running and running. And you didn't know you were running for your own blessing. So here we have that Paul said he's ready to die. And that's a good attitude. For him, life and death, as long as it's for Jesus. It was total misinterpretation of whatever vision they had, whatever prophecies they had. Because they interpret it with human emotions. They did not see the bigger picture. And so, there is such a thing as reputation in continuity. In under continuity, a reputation. Are you having re repeated types of dreams or vision? And is the reputation getting more and more? So that you sleep every night, see that thing. Night, also see the thing. In between night, all night prayer, half night, also see the thing. There is urgency. The bell is ringing louder and louder. The time is shorter and shorter for you to take action. Now there will come a time when, when you miss the chance to enter the river, then you might have to wait a long time for the cycle to come again. Sometimes in life, and this is true, Sometimes in life, you go only one chance because life is short. Sometimes in some things, you got more than one chance. And we have to be made aware of that. And sometimes when you miss the boat, you have to wait till the next boat to come. The next boat takes 40 years. So if you don't want to miss the 40 years, you always pray and watch and always ready to move in. So watch out for reputations. Watch out for what I call uh, a seal or something that locks you in. Now you notice, Paul had to make a personal decision not to be distracted. That is because in his heart he already knew what God wants him to do. You saw that in Acts 21, correct? But in Acts 20, he already said that. Everything happened in Acts 21. But in Acts 20, something inside him was already settled and sealed. 
In his last speech to the elders of Ephesus at a place called Miletus, he told them something that he knew. Uh, and he mentioned the number of years he served with them, what he has done. And uh, let's see this part. Yeah, let me get to the part. Mm, da -da -da. Mm, he's run the boys with joy. Okay, let's start from his day. Okay, from verse 18, he served the Lord, he kept back nothing, he testified the Jews. Ah, verse 22. 22. And see now, I go bound in the Spirit. That means he surrendered to Jerusalem. Not knowing the things that will happen to me there. So he doesn't know the details. But he knew some things in verse 23. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations awaits him. So he knew he's going to be in prison. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And then he say he know one more thing was going fine. He knew that he were, they will see his face no more. So he knows certain things. By Acts 20, he was already predetermined. Nothing will change him from going to Jerusalem. He needed to go. Now, look at what happened when he went. So after all the persuasion telling him, don't go, don't go, don't go. He still went. And exactly the things happened as predicted. And they tried to avoid persecution, but you know, things still happen as a lot wills. And uh, even when he tried to please them to show that he's a Jew, his the act of trying to act like a Jew was also what got him to prison. So no matter how you avoid it, still he got it. And because uh, James, the uh, James, the elder, there tried to tell him, and uh, in the end, after the Sanhedrin council and all that, he really know what to do. But look, in verse eleven, chapter twenty-three. The following night after all his testing and trials, which he knew years ago, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. From that day onwards, he keeps saying, I want to go to Rome, I want to go to Rome. But look at who he testified before. He testified to all the commanders, all the leaders. Later he testified to kings, and uh, there's King Agrippa, and uh, there was a Festus, the governor, and all this. He kept testifying the high, and he appealed to Rome to testify to Caesar, because he's a Roman citizen. This is at the end of his third missionary journey. And uh, he finished Ephesus, and it looks like he entered a different phase in his life. But guess what? All these things that are happening at the prime of his ministry was already in seed form on the day he was born again. And sometimes we forgot what God told you when you were first born again. What God told you when you were first fresh and new. But when the time comes to pass, you already forgot everything, but yet God never forgot. Because the future is casting a shadow into your past, which is your present. Look at what God told him in the book of Acts chapter 9. Or what God told uh, Ananias about this man. And he says, verse 15, this is the day he was born again, or three days later. He is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Do you notice the second one? Kings. Throughout his first missionary journey, second missionary journey, and third missionary journey, he never got to testify before kings. 
Only when his missionary journeys ended, now he's going to be a testimony to kings, governors and rulers. That was already to told to him the first day that he was born again. See, we forgot. You know how even Moses forgot when he was first chosen by God to set the Israelite free? God already told him, he will bring out the, the Israelites with prosperity, with great possession. But in the midst of all the rejection by his people and rejection by Pharaoh, he forgot. God never missed a beat. And you know how God never missed a beat? He gives you dreams and vision. If you want with God, your visions and dreams are consistent, look for a continuity, a reputation, and Look for areas where you know when something is sealed and it cannot escape your hands anymore when your dream confirms it and your vision. Then you know that you know. See, throughout the, the walk that we have in this move, we're only just coming to seven years. And you need to think about it. You know, we need a lot of training and for Elijah, when he was 35, Enoch appeared to him, told him to prepare himself for 20 years. At the age of 55, Enoch appeared a second time and told him to go for a seven-year prayer walk. Then at the age of 62, he appeared in 1 Kings chapter 17 and started his ministry. He got longer preparation than us to move into signs and wonders. We have the grace of God that has been helping us. And a lot of things have been happening in seven, seven years. But we have reached a point, at some point, we cross over some things after the 40-day fast in February the 9th. Some things that you'll be faithful are sealed. Once they are sealed, as we say, you will notice a continuity of the vision. They don't change anymore. They always reflect you having those things. But until you reflect things, until you reflect having those things, you do not see them. But once they are yours, they are always yours. Because you have made, you know, something is yours only when you keep choosing it. And when you reach a certain level of choosing it, it is sealed. Watch for the continuity in your visions. Because, why are we touching this? When you have a continuity of the vision, 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 vision and then something out of place comes. You know the out of place one is from the devil. You know it's from the devil. Like for example, I've been in the ministry since 1976. By 1979, I know I was called to be apostle. And all those years I've been planting churches, helping people plant church, the experience of planting churches in the charismatic world was so well known that Sometimes when we were at this prime, people from uh, one former singer converted, uh, even came. And then we formed an organization called the uh, uh, Fellowship of Charismatic Ministers and Churches. We have people from all over Asia and a few from Australia and a few from uh, uh, European countries and, and America. They come to learn church building and planting. And so we have planted many churches, small and big, some grow fast, some grow slow, it doesn't matter, we know how to work a church and plant a church. After all those decades, 96 to 86, and I go to different decades, 86 to 96, 96 to 2006, have visions of heaven. And then, and then, we, then this move started, 2012, February, 2000, and no, November 14, 2012. Then in 2013, a prophet comes and said that he wanted to remove me from apostle. How can that be? I have had three, four decades of knowing what it is to plant churches. Cannot remove one. So, can you see the continuity says something out of the blue? I suspend you! Wait a minute. You don't have authority to suspend. But when it was happening, everyone was shocked. They don't know what to do. But the basic principles of the Bible still stand out. Throughout the whole Bible, no prophet can suspend apostle because apostle is above the prophet. 
If any apostle is to be suspended, it's by another, another apostle or by the Lord Jesus himself. And then no man can suspend and cancel another fivefold ministry. So that prophet overstep his boundary. He claimed visions. And I reinterpret, I say, you can see the vision wrongly. And when God gives a gift, the gift can be absorbed and then you cannot see it again. Plus, we question whether that is from the Lord. And you remember how I handle it? I say, if it's of the Lord, this is what it is. If it's not of the Lord, this is how we handle it. But, whatever we handle it does not change my calling. Because that violates God's word. So when you have a continuity and you know what God called you to be and to do, and then someone comes along and says, I don't think this is yours. No, I cannot. Do you know that when I first started planting one of our first mega churches, Tabernacle of Glory, uh, we were traveling ministry, we have the Word Center, we have all those, and we were quite well known, but I never really fully you know, launched into an uh, uh, independent church. We had a few wonderful people who were followers of our ministry, very prayerful people. One of them was an Indian lady who only wear white, and she's very prophetic and very, really loves the Lord. And one day when I was in one of my future elders' house, we had a house meeting, and she knows I'm about to start a church. Uh, she, she was away on a trip, and then she made a phone call to the house. So I answered the call. Uh, in that uh, future elder's house, that person became an elder in the end. And she says, uh, Pastor, you know, your ministry is for the whole world. The world wants you. You know, the world needs you. You know, it's, it's not God's will for you to plant a church. But she doesn't know one thing that I know. The world will not listen to you unless you have something. And planting a church does not remove my calling to travel to the world. But she saw only from her spec, aspect. So basically her message was to me was don't plant a church. But I know it was God's perfect will to plant a church. And so we planted a church, the church grew. Became tabernacle of glory. So it grew and grew. And so and it is important for us to know that a continuity of vision and where something is sealed cannot suddenly be changed. I mean, it's there that continues. So, one of the things, especially visions and dreams, which you cannot, you know, uh, and especially if they're from God. Look at the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Has God changed his mind? The only time when you see God postpone something, defer something, is because of human disobedience. It's not because God changed his mind about entering the land of Canaan. God has never changed his mind. God might regret something because of the way humans react. God might postpone something because humans are not ready. God might reject a person and raise another person. But God's Planning goes forward. Never stops. We humans have to flow with Him. So watch for a seal continuity and then someone comes and tells you something different then you have to hide it in a lot and pray over it. Like for example, like Deborah, when you knew the Lord, you saw that you were around when Jesus came. Right? You live until the rapture. So in the early days when everyone was given, when you will die, when you will die, when you will die, and I, I, you were given roughly the date, and then you came to me and said, you know, I believe I lived in a rapture, saw rapture. At that time, I got no word from the Lord. No word. So waited till, you know, sometime later, and then, then the more we pray from 2013, 2014, after the first sentence left, then I prayed, then another comment that was made to me by another one of those in the first generation, they said, actually the gap between the first and, and the second generation is quite small. If they live just a few extra years, eh, they're already in the rapture. <laughs> you look at that. So I said, yeah, you're right. So you now we're going to pray, pray, pray. And then the Lord began to show about 
uh, people like Joshua and Caleb who can move into the second year and live as long and then uh, things began to change, the dynamics began to change and then until when the Lord appointed you to be one of the four then obviously cannot die already not allowed to die <laughs> Want well, to die as well? Cannot. No. No. Nobody wants to die before the rapture. But it is. But I remember that she said that inside she knew that she has this vision, and what she received was not consistent. But we couldn't put the two together yet. Except we say keep it, and we from the Lord you keep it, keep it, keep it after some time, and then you see the other, the other part side of the picture that is there. So when God has revealed to you something that is already seen and you know. Like Paul knew that he was supposed to go to Jerusalem. I tell you, no fivefold prophet could have stopped him. Agabus was a well recognized prophet. Seven people who can hear from the Holy Spirit in, Ty- in Tyre could not stop him. Luke himself could not stop him. The author of the Gospel of Luke. Because he knew what was it. Imagine, Luke wrote the Gospel and could not stop Paul. Because Paul knew what God wants him to do. And here's the thing. In the end, every one of us is responsible for our own life. You do not abdicate a decision you have to make for your own life. Because we are responsible for our own life. Thank God for fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, church, family, friends, and everything. But at the end of the day, you have to make your own decision. And your decisions will be made based on the dreams and visions that are consistently flowing in your, your life. You see, life is very complex. Many things change. But the one thing you find is consistent is the visions and dreams that you get, keep getting. All through his life, many things happen. Think about Joseph. He was supposed to be a ruler. Within a short time, he almost got murdered by his brothers. So things can change. Betrayed, murdered. Then one of the other brothers was trying to save him, actually. That's why he suggested they were actually going to kill him. They said, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, let, let, let's put him here first. Because, you know, out of anger, they will do all the things. And when he suggested that, he was going to try to rescue Joseph. At least there's some goodness in him. And then, while they put him in the pit, thinking what else to do, he must have gone away. And while the others thought they saw some traders, slave traders come, they sold him. So when he saw he was gone, he was very grieved, because they would save him. And then suddenly, what happened to the dream? No, all, all things keep changing. But the one consistent thing, eh, the dreams will always remain. That is why God gives dreams and vision. In the instability of physical life, it is the vision that makes you who you are. It's the dream that you dare to dream that is from God, that you become who you are. Because your dream will sometimes go against everything in the natural. Because you're supposed to conquer everything in the natural to reach that path. So God builds it into us. There is Reputation dream, dreams that are sealed and locked in and the continuity remains. And uh, then, in the end, another third thing is this. You begin to see patterns. I put it as patterns and different from reputation. Patterns mean there is a... You begin to have what I call... A system by which God speaks to you as you grow. A pattern. Let's point to some of the pattern. Once Joseph had his first dream where the angels speak to him in the dream, the pattern is caused by you sometimes is, is working with the angels. Because God knows the pattern of our lives. Once Joseph had his first dream and the angel successfully spoke to Joseph through a dream in verse 20, the angel used the same method, the same pattern, the same technical pattern to speak to Joseph. Which is why 
uh, once they saw that it's successful, Joseph could receive it. Uh, one, sometimes the angels say things like that. Like, um, uh, in the first seven dollars, his, his wife could not hear the angels. And one day, the wife's angels asked him, Can she hear me when I talk? And of course, the answer was no. But there is a pattern. And uh, then at, at uh, I think that would have been 2012, when we were in Mount Nebo praying, she saw a light coming nearer and nearer. I don't know whether it's going to happen to anyone of you, but I will tell this story in case it happened to you. And a light coming nearer and nearer and nearer, and then she got frightened. And then a bit of fright, and then the light disappeared. Then she asked her husband, hey, what is that? Say, oh, your guardian angel wanted to appear to you. But you got frightened and then the thing never happened. And from my knowledge, it never happened again. So sometimes they choose certain times, certain seasons to try to create a pattern of dialogue with you. Angels have been trying to communicate to us. God the Spirit has been trying to communicate to us. God the Father has been trying to communicate to us. Jesus Himself communicated to us in many ways. And when one of the ways get through to us and we receive it, a pattern develops. They will keep using the same pattern, but don't forget this, they're not going to look in a pattern. But because of the urgency of receiving from God, they will keep it. They will keep it. Like for the first seven thunders, there was a pattern in which when he goes for a job or exercise, the angels start downloading to him. And then there's a pattern like in my life, whenever I'm fasting or praying, or when I'm waiting on God, uh, there's a pattern of God speaking to me. And so when they found a way that they speak to you, they will log into it. Each one of you will have a certain pattern in which the angels are familiar with. Like for example, if every time you go into your shower, you relax, you begin to worship God and sing, and then God download to you, that is a pattern. But don't always lock to one pattern. Be more progressive. Yeah, otherwise, you know, when there's no shower, then God is silent. So, uh, everyone has a pattern. You have a pattern, angels recognize a pattern of reputation. So here, Joseph successfully uh, listened to the angel. And in chapter 2, when Jesus' life was in danger, in verse 12, the angel spoke again in a dream. In verse 12. And then after the time to come back, in verse 13, the angel spoke uh, uh, departed to another country. Then in verse 13, when they had departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child's mother, flee to Egypt. And so they, they ran out of the country, they don't know where to go, looking for a place, another dream come, go to Egypt. And actually, it would have been four times if they came back. So by the time uh, Pharaoh, uh, Herod, was, Herod died in verse 19, another dream tell him, time to go back. Four times in a dream. It is a pattern. Recognize the pattern. Recognize when God speaks to you. One of God's favorite times is when I get up quiet in the morning, pray, or you know, sometimes at night, sometimes all night prayer, and uh, waiting on God. Recognize when you get a lot of downloads. Nurture those times. Because angels try to speak to us all the time. Holy Spirit wants to download into our life. And when there is a certain pattern when they know that they got it they got it then they will keep using that pattern and as you increase more areas for God to speak to you it becomes a pattern becomes a pattern like for me when I want to look into the spiritual world there is a pattern that I go through like I will start tuning to it and I will start like the natural world would blur even with my eyes open and then I would begin to look more into the other area and the natural world blur, I pay attention to that side. So there is a pattern and they know you're tuning to it. But the first time I tuned to it uh, was very funny. 
when I was tuning to see the angels more clearly because I can discern where they are but I was I was really focused to tune to it and I was attuning to it and uh, then one of them came from the back and then looked into my eyes and then I sort of said I can see you, you know, kind of thing. Now, normally you cannot see them, right? So they can look at you, you know. Like, it's like, I can see you, kind of thing. Then from that day onwards, I can see them. And I, I know, you know, uh, the pattern. So there is a pattern in which you lock on, the pattern in which you get into the spirit. And that's the pattern. Like Jesus, he always got certain places he go to pray. He will always go to pray alone. Sometimes in the, on the mountain, uh, he get up very early to pray. That is a pattern. We always talk about devotional life. Devotional life was not supposed to be a burden. Devotional life was a pattern you develop how you hear God. So your devotional life might be in the afternoon. Your devotional life might be in the night time. Uh, it's where you learn to get into the place to hear God. It could be anywhere in certain pattern. Sometimes you're too tense, you cannot hear God, and then it's in another time that, that God talks to you. Angels are creatures of habit. Once they lock into a pattern, they, are, they feel very comfortable. And they need to feel comfortable. And some of you who haven't seen the angels, the angels haven't interacted with you, because they also don't want to frighten you. You say, Why? You know, you're frightened, your heart attack, die, then the next place is hello up there in heaven. So, they have to introduce themselves very slowly. And then they don't want to shock us. And so, as you become used to them, they become used to you, then they are more comfortable to work with you. Recognize the patterns in your life. If your pattern is taking a guitar, worship God, then you can hear, then that is your pattern. Every one of us got certain pattern. So, recognize the pattern recognize the patterns when you have your dreams recognize the patterns when you have your visions and then make that your habit so that you can have more of them once you have more of them as the first stage of learning to have the vision but I'm trying to point to advanced dream and vision training part 2 Belong to second series, not taught yet. So, I'm giving you clues. And it is, you learn how to have patterns and you learn how to continue your vision. Like for example, if I see a vision and I got a lot of things to do, I could postpone seeing it. And then you find another time, you get quiet, and then you continue to see the vision. So your vision can be part 1, part 2, part 3, sometimes up to part 66, 75, and you're continuing to see the continuation. So it's not like chop, 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 one come, go. This one come, this. no, it becomes a, your visions and dream got continuation. When you enter into continuation of dreams and vision, you literally are living in the spirit. Because it's just like when, like, 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 for example, if we're going to Korea, you know, for all the building trip or the food tour, with food tour, wow, this one is very nice and mix everything. Normally it's fast, 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 this one, fast, then eat. <laughs> and um, then when, when we go, it's not like you're going to land for the first time, like you don't know the place, correct? You're going to continue from your knowledge of what you have. It's not like that's your first, when you're first time in the country, of course everything is new. You're learning all the places uh, there. But once you know a place, you roughly know when you go there what it's going to be like. You, you just continue uh, adding to your knowledge of Korea and then uh, knowledge of this place. And you add this thing, you know what you will do. And, and you add to those patterns that are there. It's important for us in, to know that in the spiritual world, when you have encounters in dreams and vision, you have a continuity. You, like, God revealed this thing, then He revealed the next section, then He revealed the next section. It's like your downloads continue. And they, they are not like chop, 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 chop. They are very flowing. Like one chapter, then you go deeper, and go deeper, and go, deep, go different. And that is when you actually enter into living an open vision. When you know at any time you could return and look into the area 
and continue where you left off. So you develop the ability to go in and out of the spiritual realm. That's advanced level of visions and dreams. So for you, the dream is, you know, like before I go to bed, sometimes I say, okay, I'm going to continue where I left off. You know, once in a while, God gives you a different thing. Or sometimes when you pray and I'm about to go, you say, I'm going to continue where I left off. When you just continue. Except because we live two lives. You've got to live a natural life, you've got to live a spiritual life. So there are times when you can get back into the spirit, so you go enjoy it. Then after you say, okay, now I'm not coming up from the spiritual realm and I'm going to go to the natural realm. And so your natural life continues. Then they finish your natural life, then you end the day, and then you know you're going to go back. I'm going back to the spiritual realm, I'm going to continue that. So as a result, you live two lives. So whenever I go back to the spiritual realm, I will do the usual thing I do. I visit the schools, sometimes teach the people there, and come back and say, okay, bye, I'm going to go down back to the earth, and then you continue. So it's like you're living two lives. And that's quite fun. And so uh, that's another level that you enter. So your visions and dreams are now like normal. It's just that you close your eyes, you're there. You open your eyes, you're here. Kind of thing. It's not like, you know, oh, one vision here, oh, one dream here, oh, one chop here, oh, one chop there. You try to connect everything. It's all over the place, like jigsaw puzzle. So you want to have continuity in the spiritual realm. And think about Jesus' dreams and vision. If Jesus sleep and dream, if Jesus have vision, would Jesus' vision be one here, one there, one here, one there, or a continuation of him straight away, operate in the spirit, straight away operate in the natural, they'll be smooth. It's just like he tuned to different realms. It's very smooth. It's not choppy anymore. Strive to enter that. And reach that point. And that one will be another teaching, another series. But as we end the first series, I need to show you what is to come. What you can still do at one's level. Praise God, any Q&A, question and answer. Yes. Okay, let's, let, let's, let's get Louise first. She raised her hands first. Pastor, uh, last week I had a, a dream, but I tried to go back to remember. I can't remember all. So just now you talk about that. You know, I, I, I asked for the Lord, help me to remember back this dream. So I saw, I saw a dream. My mom uh, got one man tell me, oh, your mom, uh, something like that. She, 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 she's not for anti smooth. She's not for? anti smooth, But she's in heaven already. Oh, she's not for anti smooth. Oh, not for end time, okay. okay. Um, and the man tell me, you are the one to take over. You have this authority to yeah, end time move. So, 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 the man tell me, show me the Noah, Noah art, and uh, and I go in to the Noah art, it's, it's very huge. I, I look up, and I look, look, and look, and look. I just, wow, this is so huge. So, uh, the man spoke to me again. He said, Jesus has given you this authority to shut the door, to shut the art door. So, so I, so I have one, I have one lady, with me, this this bit a bit. I try to remember. And the lady tell me, don't shout first. Uh, I go to get something. And I say, no. Jesus says shout. Means shout. No, no, no wait. So, uh, so I wake up. Once I wake up, the thoughts came to me. Uh, we are in the uh, U.S. outporting time. Uh, I remember we, we have five days uh, overnight prayer. Yeah. And one of the morning I went back to sleep. I was in bathroom to, to, to wash out myself. And the thoughts came to me, uh, Mini Noah. Mini Noah, yeah. yes. So, okay. One of the visions that the first time that I saw was also that the move of God was like Noah's ark. 
and uh, we are proclaiming like Noah proclaimed there will be a time come when God shuts the door and there's no more chance and so that indeed is true I accept that when God talks about you see in your dream we have to synchronize with the word in the word no one himself cannot shut the door nor can anyone shut the door only God can shut the door no human is allowed to shut the door so in your dream it means that uh, if it speaks about that that means that it's for you to pray and intercede for people to go in and then people need to be warned that when the door is shut no one else can come in and so do you have any other dreams about your mother and all that? no that's only a dream so that is talking about your destiny when before you were born that uh, your mother when we all go back to heaven you will realize that you were called and organized before you came <clears throat> even your parents know about it but they don't know until they go home so well there's a dream just confirming about the end times and all this yeah but for many of you I find that each one of your dream is singular you got one dream here one dream here, one dream here, one dream here, one vision here, one here. Then it takes a lot to paint the whole picture. <clears throat> and uh, y you already noticed something about the first seven thunders when we had it. There was continuity, correct? There's continuity in the revelation. Even the second seven thunders before he went off also got continuity. So continuity is what needs to be built. And it can only be built when you get familiar with the spiritual world and the spiritual realm. Then you begin to see the continuity of what continues and what needs to be done. And so continuity must be built in. Then the spiritual world is familiar to you. Praise God. Some other questions? I saw some of you coming up with questions. I'm here. <coughs> um, I just had a question about one of your charts. Um, when you talked about, you know, the background, the source, the position. What did you? What, did, what was the NS beside the position? You had it right to NS in your chart uh, for for uh, the position in the allegorical context. Position. Natural and spiritual. Oh, that's what. Oh, okay. Okay. Natural and spiritual. Oh, you didn't answer it for me. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay. Oh, you're asking what is the... Yeah, because I saw the NS, I wasn't sure. What is NS? Oh, the NS. Oh, natural and spiritual. Okay, okay, okay. you're asking about this. Uh, oh, the NS here. Are uh, the position. Natural position, like Pharaoh is a natural position. And spiritual position, like a person called to, like Daniel, to be a prophet. So Daniel will see from his position. Can I, can we, can I see the other one with the filter? The other one we have a filter. Uh, oh, okay. The other one with the filter. This one. Yes. Um, what, did, uh, what did you put uh, Daniel's position in number three uh, after filter? Uh, word or Bible? Oh, this one is a word or Bible. And what, what does it say over? Oh, this one? Yeah. 2.1. I was going to say during the application or when we determine it's a spiritual source. Not everything spiritual is of God. So 2.1, we need to realize that, you know, uh, some things could be from the enemy. Uh, then we go into the third point. So this, the whole process, this one is just filtering? Uh, filtering, filtering. So the soul and then the enemy and then... Correct. Yes. Please God, any other questions? I get the mic to the back. Um, this is more like um, more for curiosity and yeah, please a bit um I was just wondering the regarding like um two two cases spiritual truth. Uh, one is the gifts and callings of God is irrevocable. Yes. Um, another one is 
God is a God who, who receives our, our, our offerings, uh, you know, our gifts and offerings to Him. Yet there are places in the Bible where times where God would not turn His face. You know that He would not. Receive. What's the last sentence? Uh, God will not. Yet there are times in the Bible where God turns His face and would not receive. Oh, the offering. Yes. Okay. Um, and also, yeah, there are times where God like rejects, you know, like Saul's case. So I'm just very curious about. You also reject Cain's offering. Uh, uh, like Saul, uh, and uh, because another one, uh, the second part is the gifts and callings of God is irrevocable. That's the promise of God. But yeah, there are times when God rejects the gifts that we bring to Him as an offering. Yes, and as well as rejects a person. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. How to harmonize with the Bible? Uh, the Bible did say that in the book Romans that the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. It means when God gives something, uh, it's always there. However, a person can render the gift inoperable, but the gift is still there. And then, even though the gift comes from God, God can reduce the gift. It, he without removing, just like He cut. Uh, Solomon's empire into smaller pieces because of disobedience. So the gift is reduced, gift is enlarged. But the gift is never removed. Uh, the gift stops functioning when the man or woman of God does not walk with God. Because the gifts uh, require that the man or woman walk with God. So in Saul's life, um, before God rejected him, he disobeyed God first. So he disobeyed God one time, two times, three times, several times, and, and then God says, the critical time was when God actually asked him to do something. God says, go to the Amalekites and destroy them because it's part of his command. He did not, then God says, I reject you now. So when God rejects, it's because of disobedience. Um, we do not know what will happen if Saul actually had repented. Apparently, he never repented. So we never see the other possibility of, the, of whether such a person who God reject can get back into God. But we do know that Aaron had a call. And Aaron built a golden calf. God wanted to kill him. He literally said, God wanted to kill him. Uh, if he killed him, it would have been killing him and the gift. But because... He actually broke one of the Ten Commandments. All the Ten Commandments penalty is death. So it doesn't matter whether apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, king, or whoever. If they break God's commandment, God is at liberty to kill the person or bring death. And so it's, it's shown that uh, it's irrevocable because uh, God, God's word is there. But I also understand why it's irrevocable. God showed to me why it's irrevocable because He said all the gifts are calling are built into your DNA. So there's no way you could... You, you have to actually re, uh, uh, disintegrate the person to remove the gift. Because all gifts and calling are built into the DNA. Which is why you can never replace another person. And that is why you cannot copy another person. Uh, because a gift is built into the DNA itself. And for God to remove a gift, He has to actually uh, make a person stop existing. And so, uh, that's on the first one, on why it's irrevocable. Uh, but it can be rendered uh, non-use by disobedience. So God stop using a person in that area. The gift is still dormant, but it's... Uh, not usable and like God rejecting Saul in terms of offering gifts to God where God can re accept and uh, reject a person that again is uh, because the DNA is quickened by God's light by connection with God because all DNA is life and life must be connected to life to work one very strange thing about light there are different lights in each one. 
And one of the things is each one of us got a certain amount of light for each of the calling. And uh, when the first seven thunders had the ability to see that, uh, that was in the year 2012. Around, I think, around just before he went to the seven churches trip, just before February the 9th. He was within the church and he says God opened his eyes. Because at that time, uh, Archangel Uriel was already operating. So God opened his eyes for a moment to see gifts in people, talking about gifts. So he looked at me and he says, he saw about five different lights shining. And he said, all the lights are turned on. And he saw that there was, a, a one of my lights was teaching very bright. And uh, what another light he saw was like one who initiated something. And uh, actually, I know what the five lights are. Then he told me a third one about something. And then he said two more, he didn't know what it, it was. But it was also shining. But I know what it was. It was all five for anointing. And um, then when he was looking at somebody else, he says this person, uh, because I know this person, he said, hey, don't be offended, but this person, the light, not turned on yet. And then, then he looked at other, he talked about different members in the church. So he said, oh, this person, uh, they, got, they got three light, only one is turned on. Two not turned on yet. And then it's interesting that every gift in our life is like something to turn on. And sometimes we turn it on, sometimes we don't turn it on. Through our own walk, through our own personal thing. And my encouragement is turn on everything. And what we got fully. Uh, and a part of turning it on is a willingness to operate in it. For example, let's say if uh, Mohan is called to be prophetic. Let's say if he's shy, shy, don't do work, don't do the finish, I like not turn on. But each time you obey, the light gets brighter and brighter. And then you obey several times, you turn on. That means uh, you're prepared to operate in the tip where the gift is operating. And uh, so a gift needs our cooperation to, to, to work. If we are too shy, uh, too bashful to operate a gift, then it might be there but never turn on. And so that need to be uh, taken to. Or let's say if God call you to worship and you never worship, then that light might never turn on. Uh, the gifts have to do with things we have to do, the works that we have to do in this life. And there's no excuse for being shy, no excuse for being bashful. And uh, Kenneth Hagin was called to be prophet and teacher. And at first one of his light was not turned on. He never wanted to be prophet. Until he finally obeyed, then the light was turned on. So in some of our lives, lives the light is not turned on. Because we are not bold enough to move into the area. And as we obey God, then the light is turned on. And when it's turned on, it's good. It will bring different things into our life. Yes. Um, Daniel has two very prominent positions in the natural as well as the spiritual. So when it comes to uh, dreams and vision, how does he know he's operating from a natural, his natural position, or from his spiritual position? Okay, this is part one. Part two, will we have the anointing of Daniel where we can operate on two positions? Okay. On your first question, on Daniel moving between natural and spiritual, uh, when you are moving in both realms, the spiritual takes precedence. So to Daniel, his natural position was never important. He is a person who don't care about natural position. Remember, they want to reward him with a super position. Uh, he must, uh, when uh, the, the, another Belshazzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had died, and then the writing on the wall, he wants to reward Daniel with position and reward. Daniel said the one. So Daniel don't care about natural position, and uh, he just walk in the spiritual. When the natural come, he just accept as it is, but it was not so important. On the area where you uh, talk about, um, uh, repeat your second question again. In today's context and time. Oh, whether there's a Daniel a position, definitely because we are going to we're going to. Uh, be in charge of managing and uh, administrating 6 billion people. 
And when there are 6 billion people, imagine what the offering is like on one Sunday. So the amount of wealth that we handle is going to be huge. In fact, we're going to influence the world economy. If 6 billion people decided not to eat something, it caused a stock market crash. So it's... uh, uh, we're going to be that, and that all the anointings of the Bible are available today. In one generation, all the Bible anointings are released in the end time. Praise the Lord. Any other questions? Oh, I just seal the anointing that is there. Uh, so the question you ask, anointing released, why you know, still need me to so, pray? Sometimes I just sort of recognize it, or sort of bless it, or seal it, that is there. Mm-hmm. The question, uh, see, if, of all hearts, if a person uh, has lost it, so far, and God has already rejected, yep. chosen another person. Oh, yes. How is, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know how to place this. Maybe I'll just place this as the way I always feel about this. Um, I always think that um, should that happen, uh, I always believe that, you know, then be on the side of God. If, uh, let's say if uh, I happen to have lost something um, that God has originally meant for me and has been given to somebody else, I always think that I'll rather be on the side of God and find a place to to um, uh, uh, to be hap- you know to be happy with God rather than try in the natural to still try to uh, you know, gain it back or work at it you know. so is that, is that a right mindset or a right mode of thinking? Okay uh, in terms of losing a position and then somebody already fill up the position and then what do we do about it uh, let's take an example of uh, uh, the disciple to replace Judas is Iscariot. Two people were chosen. One is Joseph Basabas, the other is Justus Matthias. We know that Justus Matthias is the one who got the position. But let's not forget that Joseph Basabas was as qualified as Justus, as Matthias. Basabas was as qualified. That's why he was a candidate, as Matthias. But there's only position for one. So when Matthias has it, what happens to Basabas? Uh, the Bible didn't mention, but I saw in the spirit. Basabas uh, became uh, the leader among the next run. He became very prominent, used by God. He did not like it, any anointing in any area. The only thing was he was not known as one of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now, he did not lose anything. He was possibly, potentially there. Uh, As opposed to a position that could be lost. The closest person we can find is Gehazi. Now, if Elisha was a servant to Elijah, Gehazi was a servant to Elisha. Gehazi could have been the third prophet after Elisha. But Gehazi was greedy and wanted to use his position for gaining wealth. Uh, And so Gehazi lost his position. Uh, I don't think he ever repented. In fact, Gehazi ended up a leper because all the leprosy of Naaman came on him. But later on you found that Gehazi became a one who served the king. So in a sense, he lost in the spirit. But 
the the bubble of leadership keep pushing him up there still. So he was serving with the king. And like a very influential man among the king. Even despite the fact that he was actually a leper by that time. Uh, so that would be a man who could have been a great prophet, but who failed because he was too greedy for money. And here's uh, where it shows um, uh, Gehazi. He was rejected by Elijah. And uh, the story of Naaman in chapter 5, where the leprosy uh, came upon him. Then in chapter 8, he didn't go off the scene yet. He was still active in Israel. Uh, it came to pass at the end of seven years, the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. And um, she went to make appeal to the king for a house and for a land. Then the king talked with Gehazi the servant of the man of God, actually ex-servant. Elisha doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. Ex-servant. But a person who potentially could have the anointing of Elisha. If he only patient and wait and don't be too greedy. So he lost his position as the servant, uh, a potential prophet. He could have been the third prophet. Uh, but then he, you can see here, he still remember the old days. I uh, said, tell me please, all the great things Elisha had done. So he was like a storyteller to the king. So he ended up a man who remembered the past. And he used to tell all, remember the Bible only records small stories. So he could tell all, explore, and the king must have loved, loved Gehazi, in spite of the fact that he was a leper now, because he knew all the inside story. And Elisha was famous by that time. Nobody could get near Elisha. So he was just like, uh, still still benefiting from his former knowledge of, of uh, Elisha. And then Gehazi also remembered this woman. He said, hey, this woman uh, uh, is the son whom Elisha restored to life. And so the king, you know, uh, they, they go. so Gehazi was still up there somewhere. And he could never get back his position because I believe another servant was chosen, replacing him. And uh, there is a great spirit when a person is rejected, there is a grace period. And the grace period is until someone takes over your position. Once another person takes over the position, of course there is no more chance to return. Because you cannot remove the other person whom God has anointed. And so the person will have to play at the next level. That is there. So if the person repents, I believe they can still be somewhere there, but they cannot get back the same position. It will be a position lower. Unlike Basabas, who was never rejected, and God reward him as much as he could, except that he didn't have the title of the twelve. But he was very mightily used. There's a lot of interesting questions. Isn't it interesting that the questions you ask, the Bible answers? That's the beauty of the Bible. Everything is in the Bible. My prayer after today is that your encounters in the Spirit will be more like living a life. It won't be choppy. A bit here, a bit there. Uh, imagine, if you're so used to seeing visions, it won't be choppy anymore. If you're so used to getting dreams from God, it won't be choppy anymore. And so each time before you go to sleep, you say, Okay, I'm going to close to this spiritual, the natural world. I'm now going to go to the spiritual world. Good night. And then you sleep and you go to the other world. Then when you finish on that side, you're coming back. And uh, sometimes I'm aware. Sometimes God showed me other things I'm not aware. But sometimes I'm aware of what's happening in the dream where I go, what I do, which place I visit then when you come back you say ah, that was a good night and then you wake up in the morning you're back in the natural world functioning in this side so that makes it interesting Amen Is there a question coming from the back? Yeah, I, I, I just want to ask uh, Okay So understand that um, your spirit 
and your soul are two parts, and one part is your soul is receiving from your spirit. Uh, my question is that uh, is your spirit receiving the vision, and then your soul is the language of your soul understanding it, or is is there two parts playing during a dream or vision uh, when you experience it? Because like if you had a dream, uh, maybe the story is one hour long, but you only receive <laughs> 10 minutes of it. So is it that you actually had a vision of an hour, but your soul, uh, the actual, that what the event was an hour, yet your, what you have received is only 10% of it. Uh, so, if that's the, if that's true, uh, then uh, then we're supposed to see the full story. Uh, yes. Yeah. So my question that that's why because uh, I know that we get part at times we get more uh, when we receive from the Lord. So is it true that there is more that God wants you to receive, but at that time you only receive the part. Sometimes you're allowed to remember something Like on your question on uh, When you get a vision from the Lord Now if we filter everything from the soul That means everything left is from the spirit So if everything is from the spirit Even what we receive in the spirit The soul does not understand everything The soul will only understand in part And the more the soul is trained in the word And in the language of the spirit the more the soul can retain. So the retention problem is not the spirit. The spirit always remember everything, but the soul does not. And so the training is more in the soul area. Uh, sometimes God purposely don't allow the soul to remember. We need to keep that in mind. But sometimes you're allowed to remember because, but I cannot remember because our soul doesn't have enough capacity to remember. But at the right time, at the right place, our soul will remember. Because it's suddenly triggered by some things in the spirit. And through training, as our soul and spirit become more similar, we retain everything. Like Jesus. Jesus knows everything that goes on in his spirit and soul. And he understands the language of the spirit. I think uh, Colin is something. Yeah, so just want to encourage everyone also in the sense that um, uh, when I first came to the ministry here, I don't have any dreams or visions that I remember. But through the years being here, it just gets more and more, uh, especially the dreams. And uh, I think a lot of times we even in our soul, it takes a training for the soul to accept the, the dream. Uh, in the sense that a lot of times the natural tendency for myself at least is when I see the dream, I say, this is so out of the world, this is so strange, and I already start rejecting the dream. And um, then it makes it harder to remember. So. Uh, I have to consciously train myself to uh, try to put my preconceived ideas aside so that I can remember and write it down. And, and recently, even many cases, like this morning, I have many dreams, but I only remember uh, a short part of something because the other parts, in fact, even this part uh, that I remember, I was saying is so strange, you know, I, I, so I, I didn't wake up to write, I go and sleep again. <laughs> And then, uh, but when I woke up, I, I remember a certain part. So it, 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 later on, as pastor was teaching, I was contemplating on this dream, and then I shared with pastor in the in the break, and it actually has meaning. So uh, I think we just have to all pay a bit more attention to what uh, we have in the dreams, and to not interpret it so fast, but to record, write it down, and then pray over it. I think that will help. Definitely. Now, don't forget, the other realm 
is the reality, not this realm. So don't ever forget that the natural is the shadow. The real realm is in the invisible. When you begin to realize that the other realm is more important, then you don't want to lose anything. So then that realm begin to be more remembered, and then you find that you're just live in this life. You're just you're just doing the motions like something else guiding you in this life. So this life literally becomes that Jesus flow, do what the Lord wants. But it's the other realm that is creating, energizing, uh, 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 arranging things. Then you come back and then you just flow. You walk in the works that God has already prepared. So it's the other side doing the preparation, finishing the works. Then this side, you walk. So again, you go into the spirit, you do everything. Then you come back, you walk in them. Then you fall asleep. Again, you go to the side and you do everything and you come. Now, we can also do it simultaneously without falling asleep as we begin to more move in the spirit. Uh, and Pastor, can yeah. I share something? Um, yep. Just now as uh, Steffi and others was talking about these gifts and all that, uh, I was brought to remembrance uh, about a recent dream. Uh, the dream where um, I saw the watcher Pergamos. So uh, I read this revelation to uh, verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So what was revealed to me is that uh, even as we because in the, in the church of uh, Pergamos, they were fighting with false doctrines and wrong doctrines. So even as we receive the doctrine from the Lord, the, the right understanding of the spiritual world and all that, as we overcome and receive the doctrine, this is what will happen. We are given the hidden manna to eat, which the, the Lord will give us the right understanding and the, the heavenly things as we partake and even as we partake then we are given new names new names is like new properties new uh, new abilities new DNA in which no one knows so in, indeed even gifts and callings we can only do what the grace of God has given and we are allowed to do so I think as we as we are faithful, then new DNA and new gifts will be imparted to us for the work of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all rise before the Lord and uh, reach out into the Lord. And we are going to ask the Lord with His angels to seal the work of God in each one of your lives. Allah bahang rahasia dan jasperi in the spirit versi hembeli umrum baham beli hikibli astumom. Pidi kibi kabos lo la mahang kaprohus in the kibi hikibri atar asni alor botu kibrasta. Belahan in kibi di kibahang kalla babum baba peram beli etikili kaprom miri kibli asto. Fale isni anda la hangap ramang abri anda rangga malik kibi di kallo gorong abali asta. Kimiri ke bahasa darah maga peri anda rabas seri kimiri kimiri anda rabas izi izi ke shana lomong shoro balik ke bas ke berapa sini ke berumung ke berumah di kimiri ke berum rigin kimiri kasta kimiri 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 ke bahasa nala maga bal isne ke sini ke sliana shala lama hangga berama hasi ni ke mas shala lama hangga balik hati riata. Ege beriata la masara ramo li itiria na la mongo proboshta ramos imeri anta la bo 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 se eneri anta la mas iriata la masara la mangi meri kabla bash. The Lord seals it into your heart and life. You sense in some of your bodies the heat flowing through your hands or to different parts of your body. It's because the Lord is quickening and turning on the DNA in your life, so that you can turn on the lights that you have, that God has placed within you. For all callings and all positions in God are built into your DNA. You cannot become except what God already has 
predestined and made you and created you to be. And if God created you to be, so thus shall you be. Nothing in heaven and earth can stop you from being all that God created you to be. Especially in this life. As you're called to be overcomers. As you're called to dominate the world. Not let the world dominate you. As you're called to put Satan under your feet. Not allow Satan to be on top of your head. As you continue to exercise the authority the domain of the kingdom of God. So shall the kingdom of God be extended standard over your life, upon your life, through your life, around your life, and establish in you permanently. So God shall establish a kingdom. God shall establish His temple. And yea, the Lord shall fill you with all the fullness of His Spirit, that you may know the light that shines in you is greater than the light that has ever shown in any other generation. For in this generation, God has so chosen that He will reveal a measure of light not revealed in any other ages. For yes, God has released a Pergamos glory and has grown and grown in you until it is now at an explosive level. It is at the level of critical mass where it will take on a light and a force of its own to begin to flow to all the earth brighter than ever before with the added life of the Lord, with the added glories of the Lord, and with the added nature in which you were transformed in. So the Lord can flow through your very nature, your very being. Thank you, Father. Establish that in His life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Give you a good clap, And God bless you.